In this video, I want to take a look at rates of change. Now, if we have a scenario or context that involves more than two variables, we can use one of our methods of differentiation, namely the chain rule, to connect multiple rates of change. But before we look at some examples here, we just need to introduce a new concept which we will examine in greater detail when we look at integration later on in the course. So what is this new concept here? Well, we call this differential equation. So what is a differential equation? Well, a differential equation is an equation which involves a rate of change, or in other words, a derivative. So as I already mentioned here, we're going to look at differential equations in much greater detail when we come to integration later on in the course. You know, we actually look at how we can solve differential equations. But for this video here, we're just introducing the concept here of a differential equation. So an example of a differential equation then would be the following here. So dv by dt is equal to 4v minus 1. This differential equation here doesn't actually represent anything special, but it is just an example of a differential equation, right? We have this rate of change here, dv by dt. We've got a derivative, okay? And then finally here, we may sometimes have to form our own differential equation based on information given to us in a question. I've actually picked an example that includes this concept here where we have to form our own differential equation, okay? So there we have it, a very quick introduction here to rates of change. I think the best way to demonstrate this is to work through some examples. So all we're going to do here then is work through two examples for rates of change. So let's get started here then with question one. Now for question one, I've picked as a nice easy question just to get us started here. So we're given that a is equal to pi r squared and that dr by dt is equal to four here. It then asks us to find dA by dt when r equals 3 here. So we're given that a is equal to pi r squared. Let's just jot this down here. So a is equal to pi r squared. We're also given that dr by dt is equal to 4. So we have dr by dt here is equal to 4. And we're looking to find dA by dt when r equals 3 here. So what we're doing for this question here is connecting rates of change. And to do that, we're going to use the chain rule here. So we want them. So we want dA by dt, right? We want dA by dt. And to find dA by dt then, as I already mentioned, we're going to use the chain rule here. So in that case then, this would be equal here to dA by dr. So dA by dr. So that then is the derivative of a here with respect to r. And then we times this here by dr over dt. Okay, which we've already been given, right? dr by dt is equal to 4. So let's start then by finding dA by dr. So for dA by dr here, nice and straightforward, right? Just basic differentiation here. So differentiate a with respect to r. In that case, we simply get 2 pi r here. Okay, so we get 2 pi r like so. So in that case then, the a by dt, that is equal to dA by dr, which we've just found to be 2 pi r. We get 2 pi r there like so. And then we times this here by dr by dt, which is equal to 4. Okay, so we times it by 4. And in that case then, for dA by dt here, we get 8 pi r. We get 8 pi r there, like so. And now we're looking for the value then, or we're looking to find dA by dt when r equals 3. So when r equals 3 then, when r equals 3, what do we get here? Well, in that case then, dA by dt is equal to 8 pi r, so if r equals 3, and in that case, dA by dt is equal to 8 pi times 3 here, which gives us 24 pi there. Okay. And there we have it. That gives us our solution, right? So as you can see then, nice and straightforward here. So there we have it. That gives us the solution there to question 1. So if we just take a look then at one more question here, we have question two. And for question two, all we're looking to do here is form our own differential equation. So as we can see for this question here, we need to obtain this 
differential equation. And we're going to do that by using the information here given in the question. So for this question, then we're told that liquid is pouring into a container at a constant rate of 100 centimeters cubed per second. We're then told that there is a hole in the base of the container and liquid is pouring out of the container at a rate of V over 4 centimeters cubed per second, where V centimeters cubed is the volume of the liquid inside the container at that time. It then asks us to show that we can obtain this differential equation here. So we get minus 4 VV by DT is equal to V minus 400. So for these questions here, I do think they can look a little bit daunting at first, right? Just given all this information here, and then we need to obtain this differential equation here from seemingly nowhere. So where do we begin here? So what we're looking for here is DV. We need DV by DT here. So dV by dt here represents the rate of change for the volume inside the container here with respect to time t, okay? And to find this rate of change then, we're going to consider two things here. We need the rate going into the container. We'll just call that rate in here. We've got the rate going into the container. And we've also got the rate going out of the container, right? Because it's pouring out at the base of the container. So we've got rate out as well. We have the rate going out of the container as well. So for the rate going into the container here, we're just going to use the information then given in the questions. So we're told that liquid is pouring into a container at a constant rate of 100 centimeters cubed per second. So in that case, then the rate going into the container is simply 100 here. Okay. So 100 centimeters cubed per second. So the rate in then is simply 100. I'll put this as an equation here. So rate in is equal to 100. And now for the rate out here, again, you should use the information here given in the question. So we're told that there is a hole in the base of the container and liquid is pouring out of the container at a rate of V over 4 centimeters cubed per second. So the rate out then, now because this is leaving the container here, we're going to give the rate out as negative, right? So it's minus V over 4. We get minus V over 4 there, like so. So in that case then, for dV by dt here, that would be rate in and rate out. So we get 100 minus V over 4. Okay. Now, as we can see then, we need to get minus 4 dV by dt is equal to V minus 400. So at this point here, we're a little bit off, right? So how do we get it into this form here? Well, all we're going to do here is just times 3 by minus 4. If we've got minus 4 dV by dt, it would seem obvious then that we just need to times through by minus 4 here. So um, let me do it underneath here, like so. So times through by minus 4 here, we get minus 4 dV by dt. And that is equal then. So in that case, then we get 100 times minus 4. So that's minus 400. We get minus 400 there. And then minus V over 4, we times that by minus 4. I just get left with positive V then. Okay, so we get plus V there. And then in that case, if we write in the exact form here, this is the same then as minus 4 dV by dt is equal to V minus 400 there. Okay. These are the same thing, right? But they've given it in this form here. So just to be exact then, I'll write in the exact same form as well. Okay. And there we have it. So we've got minus 4 dV by dt is equal to V minus 400 as required there. Okay, so as required, and there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to the very last question, question two, and that brings the end then of this video here on rates of change.